Onions have layers. Right, so today we're doing second order differential equations. So this is the general equation for a second order differential equation. You can see that there is a A and a B and a C. These are our coefficients. So if you look at this um, equation here, you can see A is 1, B is 1, and C is minus 6. So what we need to do is we need to turn this into an auxiliary equation. So we take the coefficients and we put them in front of M instead. So we get a squared plus m minus 6 equals 0. And when we solve that, we're going to get our two roots, alpha and beta. You should get m equals minus 3 and 2. So this is our alpha and this is our beta. Now there are three different possibilities that you have to take into account. If you get alpha and beta as real roots, then our complementary function, so that is our complementary function. Now, to find our general solution, y equals complementary function plus particular integral. Now, in this case, on the right-hand side, we have a zero. So if the right-hand side equals zero, then the particular integral also equals zero. So cf plus zero is just cf. So y is just that. That is how you solve a second order homosexual differential equation. It's all about when the right hand side is not equal to zero. We have here x plus two. That means that since the right hand side is not equal to zero, we're gonna have a particular integral. It's not gonna equal zero. If it equals zero, there's an error, okay? And we'll talk about that later. So there are three possibilities with the particular integral. There is a polynomial, a trig, an exponential, and a combination of the log, okay? In here, we have a polynomial. Uh, this one is the quadratic, but this one is a linear. So all I'll need for this one is to let y equal lambda x plus mu. So now what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate. And then once we differentiate, we can substitute in dy squared by dx squared, dy by dx, and we can get um, an equation and solve. Okay, so now that we know dy by dx squared is 0, we can put in 0. We know that we've got 4 lots of lambda. And we know that we've got a 5. Sorry for that. This is my film project. Oh, is that? <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've made a little error there. That, that's meant to be a 1. So now that we have that, we know we can compare coefficients. So 5 of lambda equals 1. So lambda equals 1 over 5 over the 6. And we know that we've got a 2 on that side, so we've got 4 lambda. We know that lambda is 1 fifth, so we might as well put that in now. And we've got 5 mu equals 2. Now 4 over 5, we can subtract that. And then we can multiply both, sorry, divide both sides by 5, so we get mu equals 6 over 25, and we can substitute that in to our original equation to find the particular integral. And now that we've found the particular integral, we can go ahead and find a complementary function. So just like last time, we do the auxiliary equation. We should get n is minus 2 plus or minus i, so we know that that is in the form p plus or minus qi. So now we know that the complementary function is going to be e to the p x multiplied by a cos q, which is 1, uh, x plus b, we don't need the 1 there, sine x. Now we know the complementary function, and we know the particular integral, all we have to do to find the general solution is add them together. And voila! That is our general solution to a second order differential equation. Where are my glasses gone? I can't see anything. Hopefully that helped you out, guys. If you need more help, I'll link in the description below. But um, there, are, there is one more thing that you need to know, and that is the special case. Now, the special case is when you get the right hand side equal to zero, but the particular, sorry, the right hand side is not equal to zero. But you end up with a particular integral equal to zero. If that happens to you, then simply multiply it by x.